this very moment i thought i was being catfish this whole time <laughs> well um well we know ray doesn't answer questions <laughs> but we're hoping that you'll answer some questions for us i'll answer the car i'll, I'll answer <laughs> <my car. laughs> okay. um so well you know we're huge fans and uh, we're coming down to the last three episodes ever and honestly i'd really like to misery you <laughs> You know, like, I don't want to hobble you or anything, but I would love to chain you to a desk and make you write another season. And I'm just wondering, are you getting that response from a lot of fans? Uh, yeah. Look, it, a lot of people are really disappointed that it's not uh, going to continue. Um, uh, yeah. Getting a lot of that, which is great. It's, 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 you know, that's kind of what you want, you know. You don't want people to say, well, maybe it's time you, uh, you know, wrapped it up, you know? So, yeah. You've been playing the same character since 2005, so it's, it's understandable that you might want oh, to do something yeah. different. Look, I started, I started shooting The Magician back in, like, 2000, I think, or something. So that's 21 years. <clears throat> uh, so that's long enough, I think. <laughs> I think I've given it... I don't think anybody could say, hey, listen, man, you know, you didn't really do enough for the character or, you know, maybe get a couple more years out of it. Uh, I think uh, I've done my time. Last week, the the high school reunion episode, I mean, it was so funny. But then, mm. of of course, it gets it gets a lot more dark and then it's compelling. And it's like every episode. And I just I wondered if how much of Ray's past experiences if you want to talk about it, come from your own experiences. Like, were you bullied as a child? Yeah, I think so. I think at different points. Uh, I mean, not a lot. Not a lot of bullying, but I did experience it. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There is a lot of stuff from real life in the show. Um, you know, the conversations I've had with people. Um, you know, you got to be careful what you say to me because – <laughs> There's a good chance that it might end up in something at some point. So, um, but yeah, I like to take from real life. I mean, I don't really read fiction. I don't read fiction. I read, you know, nonfiction books and stuff like that. And I guess I'm more interested in real life than, than, than fiction. Justin uh, Rosniak played uh, Harry on the show is, is one, of, one of the fans' favorites. Has there been any talk of maybe doing a spinoff Gary show sitcom style you can uh, call it P's I'd company start, yeah I, I definitely want that if there was a Gary spinoff I mean that'd be fantastic I mean there's a there's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of characters there that I'd love to see have their own show or uh I'd love to see Rosak have his own show he's, 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 <laughs> and you guys have such great chemistry are you guys friends in real life well we are now I mean before the show we hadn't actually met then we sort of got to know each other season one and now we're really, really good friends. So, uh, and that sort of helps, you know, as far as on the acting side of it, you know, we, uh, and a whole bunch of, you know, there's this stuff we've had conversations about that have ended up in the show. So much of your banter, it's movie based and, and stuff like that. So I was wondering, um, are there any movies that you watched when you were growing up that's kind of influenced your writing of Ray? films like uh pulp fiction reservoir dogs uh you know goodfellas casino you know any any good sort of crime films basically i think have probably been an influence but then there's also other films that are an influence as well i mean there's one of my favorite parts of the first lethal weapon that they did uh mel gibson danny glover one of my favorite parts of that film is when uh Mel Gibson goes around to Danny Glover's house and has dinner. Um, and it's just a conversation they have over the table, over the dinner table. Um, you know, I love just good dialogue. I love people just talking to each other and, and, and having conversations. Um, so anybody that does that well um, would certainly be an influence on me, I think. 
And speaking of directors, Nash Edgerton's direction really seems to seamlessly fit in with your your brand of storytelling. You like working with him? Yeah, I think. Yeah, look, I think um, Nash has, has always liked like he was a, he was a fan of the Magician when he saw that, and uh, you know, I was a fan of his stuff that he'd done. Um, and yeah, I think um, I think we're a good fit um, as far as you know, writer directors go um we've got similar kind of sensibilities i think you know creatively we find sort of the same things funny and and um yeah i think it's i think it's i think it's worked quite well the 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 relationship there i wondered if you had always planned on gary getting the crap kicked out of him so many times over the course of the series i mean he's, he's almost been beaten to death like three or four times yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, if season one was beaten up. Was he beaten up season? I don't think he was beaten up season two, was he? I'm trying to. I I, I just felt like he got beat up so many times, but and he just keeps yeah. coming back. But I mean, so Gary is so. I guess that's why we talk about a Gary sitcom, just because like he seems like he could do almost anything. Like in socks are important. How he? I mean, he could just be a perfect against pedophile sex traffickers. How he found that dude. And then just yeah. in that episode, like when you came down the stairs and you were just stripped down and you had that shovel in your hands and just became wrath, you know? And I think to me, that's what Ray Shoesmith, he's so cathartic for so many of us because he, he does what we wish we could. And I just wonder if that's how, you, is that how you feel when you're writing him? You're thinking of, if I could exact justice, this is what I would do. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think it's just a matter of looking at the world the way it is, and there is so much injustice. There's people getting away with all kinds of things. And, uh, you know, it's one of the things I like about him is the fact that, uh, you know, he does things that we all would like to do at some point, but because of fear of consequences, we don't do them. And I think that's why we, I think that's why we like watching these characters, because they live the kind of life that we would like to live in some ways, you know, um, they take risks. Uh, they're less fearful than your ordinary person, I guess. And there's something about that that's um, that's attractive, I think. He packs so much nuance in, into his Scott. You as Ray pack so much nuance into the performance that, it, like, even hour-long dramas can't pull this off. So it's amazing that you can do it in only, you know, a forty-minute show, and the the smile. That the, that he does before he kills somebody or fights somebody, it's amazing. I love it. Where did that come from? Was that just uh Oh, that's just a natural thing. You know, I just uh I guess I've got different smiles for different occasions, but <laughs> depending on how I'm feeling and uh yeah, it just sort of comes out naturally. It was never something that I kind of worked on or stood in front of the mirror and and practice. <laughs> well, I mean, there's so many episodes that I'm crazy about, like the pee pee guy, your mom's got a strong box. When we first meet Dave, monsters, of course, but um, can't save you. Uh, that one was so amazing to me, like Brooke Satchwell's performance as Allie during that breakup scene, and it was just like heart wrenching. And, you know, as the audience, we're all going, you know, Ray will never hurt you. And mm. when she explained, her side of it, it was really hard to argue. It just, it really felt like it came from a woman's perspective. So I just wondered how you got to that point when you were writing it. I guess with that scene, you know, what she's saying, you like, you made a good point. You really can't argue with it. And Ray really doesn't. Um, he can't, there's not really much he can say about it. Um, and as far as writing it, I just, uh, you know, I'd heard stories over the years from different female friends, I guess, and, you know, situations that they'd been in. And, you know, I've got a bit of a, um, my brain tends to take in uh, generally mostly a lot of useless information. You know, I can just remember, you know, things and conversations I've had with people I had 10 or 20 years ago things just seem to stick in my head. And then when I'm writing, they just sort of, there's this kind of treasure trove of material that's there that 
that helps me um, helps me ride, I guess. And you write female characters fantastically. The your your daughter on the show is is, is amazing, and she's coming into her own yeah. now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was interesting writing writing her this season because she's very different to to the Brittany that we've seen in uh, previous seasons. You know, right? Um, a bit of a that was a bit of a, a, bit of a challenge um, to do that because I don't have much experience with 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 kids that age, uh, you know, girls that age. So, um, but yeah, from what people have said, it seems to be pretty much, you know, on the money. People are saying, you know, she reminds me of my daughter and oh, I can't. Yeah, sure. so that's, that's, that's always good. Yeah. She's like, so she was such the sweetest little thing. And then now she's like, she's so super sassy, but <laughs> <laughs> you're handling it or Ray handles it so well. I wonder, do you think that if um, parents would have an easier time dealing with teenagers if they killed people for a living? <laughs> well, Ray does, and he seems to be struggling anyway. So <laughs> I don't necessarily think that really can help. I mean, unless, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, uh, He's being yeah, super I, cool about stuff like the gun, gun, <laughs> the gunshot through the wall. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, he was kind of right in what she said, you know. If he didn't have a gun in the house, I wouldn't be playing with it. I mean, <laughs> it, it's, gun, it's, it's got to grab the gun and play with it. That's what's going to happen. So you've got to take take measures, take steps to make sure that, uh, you know, there's no magazine in the weapon. Um, if you are going to hide it, you know, where a child can get it. So, Well, I, I rewatched, you know, all the episodes from the first two seasons uh, a couple of times um i always fast part i always fast over the uh, part when your dog gets killed that was too much for me <laughs> and mm -hmm. the episode when brucey dies very yeah. tough to watch i especially for like people like me who have lost siblings it was so real and i wonder how hard was that for you guys to shoot well it was it was difficult in respect that uh it was a freezing cold day when we shot it uh that that certainly didn't help. And, uh, you know, as we were doing the scene, we realized that the scene was running way long. So we basically, and this is testament to Mick Kasim because most of the dialogue was his. Um, we had to, we had to cut a fair chunk out and had to change a, a lot of it at the moment we were shooting it so we kind of went in a side room in this house uh nick and nash and i and we were kind of like trying to work out okay we can lose this we can lose this we can lose this to get it down to a to a manageable kind of length uh otherwise the episode would have blown out to you know 35 minutes or something like that so and it's such an important scene um so yeah but you know the scene still still works and i think yeah it works works Quite well. Do you have any favorite episodes? Favorite episodes, I'd say I really like Monsters. Uh, I think, you know, the direction there, the cinematography, the location, you know, so many things, uh, you know, is one of my favorites. Uh, socks are important. Uh, they're rust and let me die. Um, and then, of course, my I guess my favorite episodes are... Uh, for season three haven't haven't actually aired yet so these final three coming up are going to be some of your favorites yeah i'd say i really like i really like the next episode seven seven i really 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 like it a lot um you know not because it's you know action-packed or anything it's just dialogue relationship stuff between people and I really like it, and uh, eight, eight, I think is 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 going to be a real cracker, um, and nine too. So really, you know, these this season it really kind of really picks up towards the finish more so than it's probably similar, I guess, to season one in the way that season one ended. You know, it kind of really ramped up at the end there, and I think that's. Uh, I think that's the case with season three. And I was really glad you got some closure with Allie. 
Yeah. yeah. It was good to, it was good to have that. I mean, I tried to have a bit of, you know, closure with, you know, characters that had been there from, you know, other, other seasons and stuff. Uh, you know, some, some I could do, some I couldn't, but, um, yeah, so it was great to have, to have her, have her back. And how, how do you think the audience is going to react to the, the last three episodes? Are, are we going to be very sad at the end or hopeful or? Well, look, I, I guess that depends on how much you enjoy the show. You know, um, it's always, you know, speaking from my own personal opinion of, of watching shows that I really enjoy and it comes down to that end, you know, that last episode, especially that last scene, that final frame, you know. Um, you know, it's a mixture. It's kind of like, you know, you you when you know it's a final episode, that's a, and it's a show you've enjoyed. That's a special. That's a special moment, you know, because you've spent, you know, how many hours with this person, and it's like you know the person because you've spent, you know. 20, 50, 100 hours, depending on how many times you've watched the show. And you feel like you know this person and you kind of got a relationship with this person. You like this person. You love this person. You, uh, so you have that kind of relationship. So, you know, for an audience, you know, it's a, it's a special thing and to have that last episode. And I hope that um, people enjoy it. And I hope that people feel that it was, at the end of the day, it was worth their time. And worth their investment, you know. Absolutely. Well, no word is that you aren't sure what you're going to do next, and um, I wondered if maybe you had considered going like the Vince Gilligan route, maybe doing a prequel. Maybe we'd see Ray when he was young. That way, you didn't have to star in it, but you could still keep the <laughs> character going. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Look, I, I I haven't really thought about a prequel. Uh, yeah, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't really thought much about, you know, <clears throat> another season or, you know, a film or, or whatever. You know, I'm just kind of, uh, what's the word? It's it's kind of like after a while you kind of run out of things to say. You run out of storylines. Um, and there's also other things going on as well. I mean, there's always other stuff going on as well that's, you know, aside from that, uh, which can make it difficult. But um, it just felt like, you know, like after season two, I was pretty worn out and I was kind of like, you know, I don't really think I want to do another one. Um, and I had a conversation with a friend of mine and, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, because we were big fans of Deadwood back in the day and the way that ended, we were just kind of pretty, pretty unhappy with, with with the with the with with what happened there and you know he kind of said you know do you really want to leave things like that I mean you've got an audience you've got these fans who love the show you know and uh, the feeling was you know I guess with season three was doing it doing it for the fans was 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 you know because the fans that we have are very loyal you know, and supportive and want to tell everybody about the show and uh, make sure people see it. So that was a big thing was just coming back, giving them a bunch of episodes and sort of uh, just having a little bit of a send off, you know, where the audience gets to have a moment with somebody that they, you know, like or love or loathe or whatever it is um, that they've invested this time in, um, you know, here's, is a sort of goodbye, I guess, you know. Uh, I think every have a goodbye. Yeah. yeah. We appreciate and it. And, and, and it doesn't matter what show it is. I mean, you, you know, I remember watching Happy Days, you know what I mean? Like the last episode of Happy Days, you know, how how moving that was. I remember that as a kid, you know. Um, I'm trying to think of other shows, you know. I mean, you know, we had The Sopranos, their final ep, uh, Breaking Bad. You know, every every show should have an end. Yeah, and to me, yeah. your, and, your show is the most comparable to Breaking Bad as far as the level, what you've done with it, and the way that you said not pushing it too long past how you can make it good. 
you mentioned uh, Deadwood. We've had W.O. Brown on the show a couple times, actually. And the two of you, I think you should definitely try and get him and you guys should work together and do something. <laughs> Love to. Have you seen Black Summer yet on Netflix? Black Summer? No, I haven't. It's, it's, a, a, it's zombie a zombie show. Yeah. It's very intense. And it really kind of oh. reinvents the whole zombie genre. And I was really, I was thinking if they did like a CSI spinoff and they did Black Summer Australia, I mean, Ray could really kill the shit out of some zombies. <laughs> yeah, look, I, uh, it's funny. I, uh, I had a zombie film years ago that I started working on back in about 2005 and I worked on it solidly for about 10 years, did so many drafts. Um, but I never, ever really got it to, uh, got it to work. But, um, I love, I love that, whether you call it, you know, I guess, a, is that a genre, the zombie film, but sure. I just kind of, it, it's kind of been done so much. Uh, but yeah, I had a, you know, I've got this, I've got this zombie film that I'd love to, that I'd love to do. That's kind of like a buddy thing, you know, which would be perfect for Justin Rosniak who plays Gary, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe, you know, that's, maybe that's what I do next. I don't know, you know, I just, uh, I had this idea of these two guys, they're living in this small country town and they kind of, they drink a lot, you know, they kind of, they've kind of both lost their way a little bit, you know? And then when the shit goes down, you know, these guys, they're, <laughs> you know, they, uh, they come to the fore, you know what I mean? And they, uh, you know, yeah. So maybe, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, I guess I'll probably do features next because features are a little easier. You know, there's less, when you're writing TV, you're writing about three feature length films in the time that you have to write one generally. And then, you know, if you, if you're acting as well, you've got to do that. And, uh, you know, I would like to get back into directing as well. So, you know, writing, directing and acting in TV is, you know, it's a, it's a huge task. So maybe features. I hope the Vajanko makes a cameo in one of the features. <laughs> you never know, mate. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's something else I'll come across. <laughs> when, I, when I saw the Vajanko, I'm like, where have I seen this before? And I remembered it was oh, after I read something where somebody asked you about it. It was on Two Chains show, most expensivest. <laughs> How much was that Vajanko? Oh man, it was. I mean, it, it depended on, you know, did you want the toenails painted? Because they customize them, like you know, what color do you want? And then we can put a little bits of hair on the toe, on the extra toes, and uh, you know, we can color it properly do you want a tanned foot or do you want you know so i mean it, it, de it depends i guess on the level of customization you know as with most things <laughs> well thank you but it's crazy isn't it like you know <laughs> it, it is it is crazy and i guess you know gary he just wanted just your basic ankle it, it didn't really look like it had too many frills on it yeah yeah or maybe you know he just couldn't afford the uh <laughs> One with all the bells and whistles on it, you know. Man, I think that's probably scary. I think it's yeah. Couldn't have to get a few it. more directing jobs before you can upgrade to the <laughs> top notch Vajanko. Yeah, I, I gotta see a Gary four. porno. I, I would watch one for sure. Season four. Yeah, season four. <laughs> Gary, yeah, Gary's business takes off and uh, he gets to get the really, really good Vajanko. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, we don't want to keep you too long. I can't believe you did this. I, like I said, I thought I was probably talking to a bot this whole time. And I'm so, I'm just so grateful to you for coming on. You know, clearly we are psycho fans. We love the show. We're going to miss it, but I really appreciate you coming on. Hey, thanks for having me guys. I appreciate your time. Oh yeah. And thank you for supporting the show too. You know, you guys, you know, getting the word out there because, you know, the show is not really well known. So you know, thank you for, you know, making that effort and supporting, supporting us. Yeah. We've been telling everybody since season one, they got to watch it. <laughs> thank you. I well, we look forward it. to anything else that you do. And if 
you know, you ever have anything you want to come back on for again, or if anything, oh, actually, if you're doing anything, I'm going to send you a message and ask you to come on and talk about it. <laughs> Absolutely, you should. Well, awesome. Man. I want to see the zombie movie, so please, you know, do it. <laughs> Movie. I got a vampire flick I think you'll really love too. But Ooh. Anyway, that's All another right. story. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> well, no, I mean we would keep you on here forever, but you know, I don't want to drag you on and on. Look, I got I got what time is it? I've got I've got till ten o'clock. I've got thirteen minutes. Okay. All right. <laughs> well then since we were talking zombies, fast or slow? Yeah. Oh, fast. What's, uh, what's your favorite zombie flick that you can think of? What's the one that you would really uh, inspire you? Look, favorite zombie. Look, I, I like the I like the Dawn of the Dead remake. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah. Black I mean, Summer is the most like that. Oh, right. Okay. Black Summer, is that the one where they kind of follow different characters? Yes. We've got these guys over here and then they'll go and follow somebody else yeah i have seen a couple of eps of that now yeah, season yeah. two just came out it's very good just as good as season one yeah it uh it came out what a year ago or something it was like two years ago and then you know pandemic like everybody uh shut them down for a minute and then this last season they filmed all of it in calgary which we just uh we just interviewed one of the main dudes from the second season and um, when you get to the end of the second season, especially if you're a zombie freak like me, there is a gauntlet of zombies that this dude goes through. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. It seems like one continuous shot and he's got, they're coming at him, coming at him. And you're like, is he going to make it the whole time? And you're just white knuckling. But it's one of the best sequences. I mean, since Dawn of the Dead 2004 that I've ever seen. I got an issue with the slow moving zombies. It's it's like, you know, I, I I remember watching The Walking Dead and I really enjoyed season one, mostly for the most part. But then after a while I was just kind of like, uh, slow moving zombies, you know, they're not that much of a threat, really. You know, I kind of you gotta suspend your disbelief to some degree, you know, and kind of go, well, you know, you could just walk really fast away from them <laughs> a day. That's all you have to do. I mean, you get people sneaking around and trying to be quiet. Like, okay, they're going to go into this. They're going to go into some uh, store to get some stuff. So they kind of creep in quietly. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you'd stand out the front and you just yell or call out so that if there was a zombie in there, they're going to come out. <laughs> and you, you go in. So it was kind of, after a while, I was just like, guys, come on, you should really know how to deal with these things by now. <laughs> like, you should know how to deal with these things a little better than, than how you are. So, um, but yeah, I, I love the, you know, 28 Days Later. Have you guys seen that? You guys, oh, yeah. yeah, you would have seen that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was really, that was scary. That was yeah. really scary zombie stuff there. And, and, and the second one they did too, because they were so so fast and strong and really hard to stop when that movie came out none of like our generation that's alive now had really dealt with a pandemic and now that we've all kind of been through this covid thing it makes it seem all the more real you know that there were oh, absolutely i mean this whole yeah i saw this morning that sydney is back on lockdown for another couple of weeks yeah sydney's back in lockdown for like two weeks now um and you know i'd just been in victoria where there'd been a lockdown and now i'm in new south wales and now there's a lockdown here it seems like everywhere i go there's a lockdown or something so uh yeah and there's been a whole bunch of them so yeah expect to see some um i don't know some virus movies or some uh zombie movies there's probably going to be more coming because of covid i guess yeah for sure there's a lot of stuff that's been influenced by it, I'm sure. Mm. I like, um, you know, just to keep the zombie talk going, but have you seen Train to Busan? No. Is that a feature? Uh, or? Yeah. It's a Korean movie, and um, mm. it's all these people, they're trapped on a train, 
and you just have to keep getting from car to car. Fast zombies, they turn quick and it's gory. It's intense. I really think you would like that one a lot. It's made by the guy that made Parasite, right? I think, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, right. Train to Busan. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the vampire movie that you, you have the, the script you're working on. Uh, the vampire movie is about a guy. A vampire lives in a gothic apartment somewhere, probably New York City or something, and he's really, really old. Like, this guy's like, like he's, a, he's about a thousand years old. He's been around and he's depressed. He's clinically depressed because, you know, he's been everywhere. He's done everything, seen everything, and he's just bored out of his brain. Um, and basically, you know, he has to feed off people, which is also, you know, a bit of a pain in the ass to, you know, get out every day and do that. Then he gets the idea that he'll just start robbing blood banks. So he starts robbing blood banks, gets caught, gets locked up in a psychiatric facility where they're kind of, uh, you know, checking him out to see what's wrong with him. And uh, and then it just sort of goes from there. I won't go too much into, into detail, but that's that's kind of that's kind of the, the general gist of it. But I've got a whole bunch of things. Um, I've got about 25 things that, you know, a list of things that, that I want to do. Some I will do, some I won't do. And it's just a matter of, uh, you know, pulling my finger out now and just kind of, you know, start just, just writing something, just picking something and just doing it. For Are you sure. just trying to like, get through the end here, get through the end of the series and just give yourself a mental oh look you know uh trouble with that is i get bored so basically you know i am traveling at the moment but i uh i do like to work as well you know it gives me a sense of purpose and uh it's a bit of a spring in my step so i'm really gonna have to switch on this week and start um start 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 working on something i've got a heist movie i want to do um I've got a movie about a, a couple, a uh, guy and a girl traveling around Australia and she gets abducted and he's got to find out what happened to her. Where did she go? Um, you know, that might be the next thing. I'm not sure. It's just uh, just going to have to write a bunch of things and then pick the best one, I think, out of, out of, out of what I do. Oh, we're looking forward to whatever you, whatever you <laughs> comes next. Yeah. From you. Yes. I did, I did, I did want to ask you, um, you know, we all have, dark senses of humor i know i do and it comes comes from you know things that have happened in my life and i just wonder you have such an amazing dark sense of humor can you pinpoint when this came on to you i mean like how you developed this humor yeah that's a good question um i'm not you know i, I guess i was always a bit of a different kind of kid in a way um always a bit of a loner um and I guess, you know, I had a bit of a troubled time, I guess, uh, up until I, you know, for most of my life, I guess, I've really struggled with uh, a lot of things in my life. Uh, it hasn't been, it hasn't been, uh, my life hasn't been a wonderful experience, I guess. And uh, I think maybe that's where the sense of humor comes from, being able to laugh at no matter how bad life gets being able to keep your sense of humor you know i think that's really important absolutely yeah i mean i i totally agree i mean you have to find the humor in everything or or you go under <laughs> yeah you really do <laughs> yeah. totally yeah. well i mean i really feel like you the show too i i think that it really helped has helped people i know there's sometimes when i'm going through stuff i'm angry I'm mad at the world. I'm, I do a lot of stuff in animal rescue here and it's yeah. hard to watch what people do. And you just have yeah. these thoughts of what you would do to them <laughs> and how can they be this way? I mean, I, I want, I keep thinking of the story of like a, an animal control officer who by day does his job. And then by night he goes back to these people's places and Ray shoe smiths their asses. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> I'd watch that show. Oh, would you now? I would watch that show. Yeah, look, it's funny, you know, saying that. I, I had a, I got a message today from somebody 
who told me that uh, they just reached out to me and said, you know, I didn't know this person. They said, oh, look, you know, really love the show. Her father um, recently passed from cancer, but she said that uh, when he was, you know, having a really bad day, they'd, he was a huge fan of the show. And when, they have, when he was having a really bad day, they'd sit down and watch some episodes of Mr. In Between. So, um, you know, that makes me feel pretty, pretty, pretty good about, you know, about what I'm doing, I guess, you know, and, and a lot of people have said that in different things. You know, I had somebody say to me, you know, they watched the end of season two with uh, Bruce and Ray. Um, and there was one guy who said, look, he hadn't spoken to his brother in 10 years, you know, and he said after he saw that episode, he called him. Now they're talking again. You know, I've had so many people talk to me about, you know, you know, and Ray's talking about being bullied and attempting suicide and stuff. And people have told me things and, and said, you know, thank you for talking about this stuff. So, you know, it makes you feel like, you know, you're not just entertaining people, but you're actually sort of doing some good in the world, which, um, which is, which is kind of nice. It's a nice uh, bonus. Yeah, for sure. You're packing so much into, into these episodes that like shows that have run for run for 10 seasons don't pack this yeah. much. that's and that's but that's the problem with it i guess is that you know when you when there's you're packing so much into it you you're using a lot of ideas you're running through a lot of ideas you're using up a lot of stuff i mean if we if we if i wrote this show the way that most other shows are written we, we could have got six, we'd, we'd be up to six seasons by now. You know what I mean? Um, but it's so, burning so brightly in, <laughs> right now. Yeah, and, yeah. And people say, oh, well, you know, why don't you write hour long episodes? It's like, well, yeah, but then if the episodes were an hour long, there'd be a lot more filler in, the, in those right. episodes. You know what I mean? So anyway. And you always leave them wanting more. And you're exactly. definitely, you're definitely leaving us wanting more. I was, I, I feel like that. In everything, even in conversations, when you're talking to somebody, you always like no one to walk away. I hate it when people have to make that. They have to do that one last sentence. Make your joke. Get out. Exactly. You know, exactly. Give me your best joke. Leave. You know. Say something profound. Leave. You know. <laughs> and on that note, yeah. thanks yeah. so much for taking sure. time to talk to us. Good to talk to you guys. Well, thank you again, and um, I won't, will stop stalking you on Instagram, but you know, <laughs> certainly message me anytime. I will respond sure. right away. <laughs> sure. Next time I do something, we'll talk again. Yay. Well, thank you so much, Scott. It was such a pleasure, and uh, hopefully we'll be talking to you soon. We'll watch anything you do. Fantastic. Good to talk to you guys. You too. All right. Thank you. Bye.